You right, guys, and welcome back to the channel. It's Andy here from Peninsula Painting Projects. So today we're going to focus on something that's never been featured on this channel before. It's non-scientific, scientific. It's non-science fiction, and it's non-citadel. It is a scale model by Airfix. Now this is one of the fighter planes, uh, Spitfire, from World War One or World War Two, presumably. Um, I haven't owned one of these kits since about 1998 my dad used to buy me these on the weekends we used to we used to assemble them and, and paint them and stuff uh, back then i wasn't really into the, this this hobby as a, as a as in general and i wasn't really into these kits either um it wasn't until two, the year 2000 that i got into um the you know warhammer 40k but i just saw this for two pound 15 home and bargains and i thought i might as well it's cheap as chips and it'll be a bit of a laugh, won't it? So I'm going to paint it up using the stuff, just these paints, this normal paintbrush and this uh, this glue as well. Um, if you are interested in seeing me do more stuff like this, you know, I, I am willing to uh, to buy some more if, if I can get them cheap enough and that. Um, so yeah, if, you, if you are interested, let me know. Put a comment in the description if you like the video. And if it's your first time here, give us a subscribe and I'll see you in a minute. Nice so today day. we're going to paint this. I haven't purchased or owned one of these in about, God, since I was about eight years old. So I'm going to start off with paint number 90, which it says there, use number 90 to the bottom. But what we're going to do is, because I'm taking this from a perspective of, of a beginner, someone who's just bought this and they've only got these paints, and, and the paintbrush provided, we're going to use this as the 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 um the undercoat. So I'm going to have to thin this down and do two thin coats. But what we're going to do is to make sure all the pigments mixed up properly. Oh shite! See that's another issue. Open the pot, get it all over yourself. So that's something to consider when you're buying it these little pots right so I'm just going to use McDonald's coffee stir and just give it a little stir to be honest the, the paint seems very thin anyway so we might be able to get away with using this and it's own this is humbrol paint um, here's the Humble paintbrush. It's not too bad. It, it's a synthetic brush. Wet, wet our brush. Um, let's see what this is like. I've, I've, I've pre washed this. Yeah, it's very thin anyway, so. So, ideally, we could do with having an undercoat on this. But unfortunately, we're not doing things like that, are we? We're just going to do it in a way that a beginner would paint this. Someone who's just literally just bought the, bought the box. I don't know how this is going to turn out. It might look like a bag of rubbish, but hopefully it doesn't. And see, because this is a uh, synthetic brush, that's one of the reasons why you can see the um, the brush marks more clearly. So it's probably best to give it, you know, soft, soft and short strokes. I think on the second coat I might. On the second coat I might. On the second coat I'll probably will thin it down. dying to get out a bigger brush but those are the rules that I set for myself so I can't do it been really looking forward to, to painting this because like I said I've not painted these for ages I've been obviously collecting Warhammer 40k the Citadel stuff for many many years and it's a different quality of product isn't it I'm not saying that these are poor I'm just saying that 
the Games Workshop stuff are really, really highly detailed. And that's one of the reasons why the price is a lot more expensive than kits like this, for example. I think as well, if I, if I bought one of these kits again, I would use some sort of pegs to, to peg in the, the, the chassis. See that line there? Be better if that was a, that was a, a better fit. Also, I am quite shocked about this paint. Didn't expect it to be this good. It seems to, to be going on quite well, considering that there's no there's no primer on here. So that's a good thing, really, isn't it? And I suppose the good thing about these kits is, if you just want to paint one or two of these, you can just you can just get the kit. You get enough paint to paint the model, and then obviously, if you buy another kit, you've got you've still got this paint left, which is which is quite pretty decent, really, isn't it? I probably didn't shake this enough either as well, so it's probably even better than how it is now. Normally, I wouldn't get the paint right up the throw all that much but it's a cheap and all well it's like a, a basic paintbrush isn't it it's as long as I wash it out thoroughly it should be alright so what I'll do guys when I come back I'll leave this to dry I'll either do the second coat on camera or I'll let you know that I've done the second coat but if I do a second coat off camera it'll be exactly the same as the way I've done this so I'll see you in a minute. So as you can see, I've done, I have done the two two coats now. So the th second one was uh, thinned down, a one to one mixture of, of water to to um to acrylic mixture. Um, be really careful with these paint pot guys, because as you can see, my thumbs are massive, my hands are massive compared to this pot anyway. And both times I opened this, it went everywhere. So in the end, popped in a little bottle cap and then thin the water down thin it down with water then I just took this to the bathroom and rinsed it out literally can't even tell it's been used so next we're going to use and follow this uh, we're going to use number 29 which is the brown colour so we're going to attempt to do this camo on, on the top of the plane now hopefully it's a, it's a success I'm going to shake this paint up again Use that coffee stirrer if I can find it. I'm going to try not to um, at it. You know, what? I've just opened it for teeth. Trust the old teeth. Now, where's that stirrer gone? Where's it gone? I can't find it. Oh, that's great. I've got a spare one here. So um, just give it a bit of a stare, and I'm gonna. In fact, you know, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna stare like that, yeah. And then, rather than scraping that back into there, I'm just gonna transfer it. And then we can just. Try this off. Use that one again. Another time. So, yeah, I think that might be enough because there's no, there's no camera on the bottom, is there? It's just on the top. I'll leave that there. We can see that as a reference. That should be enough. So, thin this down with water again. So, I'm with the paintbrush. Actually, put a couple of drops in. One. To see three drops, yeah, three drops should do for now. Mix it up. Seems seems thin enough. So, let's have a little. I haven't done this. I've never done this before. Um, a little bit there. And then I'm gonna go across here. So I'm trying to replicate that bit there. 
two on the free kick at the moment. And then like that, the bottom part. Um and then just in there. I hope this looks good to honest guys. Um, and then I'm gonna take this like this as well. That's gonna be brown. Um that's gonna be brown, that'll be stay the green. It's more so in the middle, isn't it? So, like I've said, I've, I've never done camouflage ever. Never done it before. So hopefully, it will look okay when it's done. And um, what does a little wing look like? Look at that one. But this is this is good practice for me. Now we're going to fill this all in. Get a bit closer to the to the table. So let's go brown. So what part are we doing brown then? Oh yeah, so this part is brown. I think I'm going to have to do two thin coats of this. Just to make sure. Yeah. I will have to do two thin coats. Definitely. It's not a problem. I'd rather not obscure the detail, to be honest. Plus, as well, if you do your second coat, it hides just the end. Um, I do brush marks. You might think it looks a bit scruffy at the moment, but trust me, second coat, it will look a lot better. It's all about taking your time really, isn't it? So in the two previous steps, I demonstrated how to put the base coat on, which was this colour, and the, the brown. I just showed the, um, the applying the first layer of thin down paint. So obviously once I had a break, I went and did the green. And as we can see, it's not show it as we can see it's showing the, um, the, the lighter cream colour underneath it. So I'm just going to show you how I do the second coat. Obviously it's, it's not rocket science is it? You just apply it but I'll show you anyway. So once again I've put the paint in a little bottle cap and because of the heat at the moment in England, well where I am at the moment, the north west of England, it's, it is quite hot. So the paint is drying up a lot quicker. You just do like swiggly marks along the edge. As as I explained before, then before I started this tutorial, all I'm demonstrating is how how a beginner. Would, would tackle this model. Someone who's probably never painted before, someone who's just bought this kit and has only got the tools that are in the box. So I'm not expecting anything good to come of this, but it's a little bit of help for anyone else who wants to try this kit. And it's actually killing me not being able to use any washes because I feel as if I, I use washes too much, but they are needed. In this type of hobby, they're definitely needed. You can't really do the hobby without them. 
and I don't know what I did before I found out about them to be honest. Also this paintbrush, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. You know, it's a basic paintbrush, it's it's an average paintbrush and it's you know it's holding its tip alright, it's it's not destroyed yet. Not doing too bad. One thing I am a little annoyed about though, these little pots. You know, look at the paint on my hands just by getting the paint out just to do this little part. I'm also using my teeth as well to open it because if I use my fingers, it's just going everywhere. So, and every time you close it, paint sprays everywhere. It's been interesting. Interesting model to paint and put together. I quite enjoyed it to be honest. I think though if you thin the paint down too much you do lose a lot of pigments from it. I don't know if any of you are friends with me on Facebook um, and I've said openly on, on my Facebook profile and on a group that I'm part of, I've been watching a lot of World War II um, documentaries and TV series and films and I'm starting to get into it. Like I don't know I don't know what whether it's my age or it's just sparked my interest a lot more now. I'm so expect more World War Two type of um, models in on this uh, channel soon. So that's the second coat. I have to do a third one. We're going to do the black in a second. Um, it's not too bad, you know. Camouflage isn't the best, is it? That I've done, but I tried to replicate the box as best as I could. But I think with without using washes and stuff like that, it, it's harder to make the the model look more realistic. So I'm happy with how the paint jobs come out to now. Um, there's nothing else I could do to make it any better. You could probably do a couple more coats on it, but I think that's enough. Um, I haven't glued this on because once this tutorial is done, I'm going to give it a wash, give it a brown wash to tie all the colours in and make it look less cartoonish. Next, we want to do is the decals. So I'm going to use my trusty children's scissors. I'm going to cut them off here now. Got some clean water. Some paint pot. Now oh, it's that hot, guys, that the paint pot is actually... The, the, the water in the paint pot has actually dried out completely. Pop that in the water for a little bit. I haven't done decals in absolutely ages. Yeah, see that side enough a little bit. Trying to get this on camera is a little bit tricky, but you just use your brush to pull it off this card. And we have to try and work this now. Like I said, I've not done decals in a long time. So this might be the completely wrong way to do it. But like I said at the beginning, I'm doing this from the perspective of someone who's not done it in a long time or is new to it completely. They're probably have done with putting that down a little bit lower. This is my first one back. That's, that's it. Uh, you don't be at the bottom. Careful as possible. So that's on there. Looking a little bit more realistic. Next. We shall put the other one on, on the other side. 
Always good practice to do stuff like this, isn't it? I have been quite enjoying doing the, this, so I probably will get get some more in the future anyway. Yeah, just come on. Let's try that again. So if you look at this bottom picture, the DW is more near the wing. On the top picture, the DW is near the rear of the, the um, plane. So let's get this back into view. So what you want to do is you want to try and use your paintbrush to to manipulate onto the vehicle. And for the next ones. Decal number two. We've got the wingspan. I need to learn the terminology, don't I, for aeroplanes and World War Two vehicles. That should pop. Yeah, pop both of them in for now. Try that. This is probably the least exciting bit of the, the video, but. <laughs> It's a learning curve. Not a bit longer. The paint's come away from the pot. Look at that. Oh, you should always have tissue on your bench, guys. On your workbench. As well, get them both out. That's that one. Now for these ones at the back. To the front end, front end to the of the wing there. Maybe push it down a little bit more. Happy with that one. And last one. Get me decal practice in. So that's that. It looks okay. I'm fairly happy with it. You know, I've done it the best I can with what little tools available. If you, so guys, if you like this video, don't forget to like. Leave a comment if it helped. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Nice one guys, draw.